All right, so caffeine, you know, uh, a simple molecule that, that we all know and love, or maybe not all of us, but a lot of people end up, uh, you know, consuming this pretty often. But, you know, what, what does that actually mean? How, how, does, uh, how does caffeine interact with our body? And so I'd like to pull up this little protein over here. So this is Big actually... <laughs> Uh, there's, there's, there's some bigger ones. I'd say this is still kind of on the <laughs> medium to small side. If we were to do mm. just a direct comparison, here's our adenosine. Uh, I believe here is our caffeine. Yep. So let me just go ahead and place that. There we go. Wow. So it looks basically okay. like a like an abbreviated form of adenosine. Kind of, yeah. So there's, there's a few key differences here. So, you know, this this pentane, this, ring, this benzene. Or pentane. Kind of, well, we, we have yeah. a, a six-member ring structure. But there's no double bond. There's the nitrogens here instead of the double bond. So okay. that, that's going to be one of right. the key differences. But so if we look at the overlay, uh, we see that, you know, these yeah. oxygens here are a pretty big difference. And then, you know, this, uh, this, this extra carbon over here instead of the hydrogen. And then we have this whole group mm -hmm. over here. And this whole group is going to be some of the uh, most uh, important aspect. But if we go ahead and go into the pocket, let's zoom in. All right. Let's see how uh, how is this usually oriented? So what, like that, right? Yeah, pretty much mm -hmm. like that. So we see that you know the same receptor could pretty much fit either a caffeine pretty well or an adenosine. Pretty well as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's similar structured molecules, then they end up fitting into pockets uh, in very similar ways. Pulled up this structure because it has a lot of similarities. Um, mm -hmm. if we did a direct overlay. We could see that it starts it starts branching off here in terms of how that mm -hmm. actually is uh, is going down. But yeah, this is a, a a drug that's you know used to treat different medical conditions. You know, kind of has similar shape, similar structure. The slight difference is, uh, it means that it's going to have some different effect on your body. Uh, but the overall goal is just showing that, you know, you could have these these templates. And when right. you start branching out from the template and, you know, modifying things and, and creating something new, uh, then you might actually create a cure to some disease. So um, this uh, Vidarabine is, is actually uh, used to treat herpes simplex. Um, so it's prescribed wow. in terms of like antivirals. But you know, if you look at mm -hmm. it, it's very similar to that adenosine, which is somewhat similar to the caffeine, mm -hmm. which uh, which means that you know all of them might have some interaction with this big adenosine receptor that we see right in front of us. So, so uh, this molecule that we're looking at now is that something that would just be come across naturally, or someone might have been proposing changes to a caffeine molecule? Um, so uh, well, why would someone target the adenosine receptor specifically for something like Kirby simplex? Um, you know, it's a, that's an interesting question. I'm not sure if they are even targeting these adenosine receptor. Mm -hmm. There could be, you know, similar mm -hmm. receptors in the virus um, where if you, okay. you know, use this chemical, it ends up blocking some functionality or, or reproducibility mm -hmm. uh, with the virus itself. So um, okay. I'm not too uh, familiar with the like bacteriopharmacology uh, or you know viral virology yeah. of, of any of these uh, structures, but I just wanted to mm -hmm. show that yeah you, know, you can have similar things. Right. Some of them are found in nature. You know this the so adenosine over here is found in nature, mm -hmm. but then um so this adenosine is found in nature. But then this vibar by vibridine. Is a uh, is actually a synthetic compound, and then this caffeine right. is you know found in nature, but then also uh, you know used in a lot mm -hmm. of applications as well. So mm -hmm. just yeah, just want to talk about similar structures and and how they might um, right. you know have different effects uh, on your body. Because if we look, you know, your your body really just interprets it as a uh, as a three D shape for the most part with different like electrostatic mm -hmm. properties and binding capabilities. So if we mm -hmm. um, you know purely just look at the the structures of, of each of these. Mm -hmm. um, then, then we yeah, could, they all look. Yeah, we could see some yeah. some good information about all of them just on up here. Like, is this blob similar to this blob? Well, kind of. And mm -hmm. then these two blobs are, are actually extremely similar. So th there's right, you know right. some information you could pick out from this, but I wouldn't say this is the be all accuracy of chemistry here. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of different mm -hmm. things that happen and. You know, a lot of these things break down in your body and, and get metabolized in, in your stomach. Or, right. You know, there's just so many different variations of, of things that could happen where, you know, us looking at this frozen time 
snap of, of nanoscale to, you know, structures mm-hmm. of, of what's going on it is, you know, it gives us a glimpse into what's going on in reality, but it isn't the full picture. You know, all these things are moving right. at really, really fast time scales and everything is just kind of you know, twitching around all, all the time. Right. Yep. Cool. Um, so I have a few other structures I wanted to, yeah. to talk about here. Um, so the next one, this uh, 171 over here. So this one's really important for your body. So this one's actually used uh, all over. Um, oops. Let's just get this one. All right. So, so this is used all the time by your body uh, everywhere. It's actually you know, the most important or one of the most important chemicals. Uh, let me just make that a bit bigger. Cool. And so if we check out this overlap, mm-hmm. there we go. We see that it starts you know, branching out of this, this bottom base here. And then we have right. this entire structure. So notice how we have this orange group over here this orange group right. and this orange group. Mm-hmm. So we have one, two, three of them. And this orange is phosphorus. So we okay. have a triphosphate group. So we uh-huh. pretty much have the original adenosine here. And then we added on these three phosphates. So now we have adenosine triphosphate. So that's ATP. That ATP, sounds familiar. ATP is the, is the <laughs> super important molecule uh, that is... Uh, it talked about as the energy unit in your cell. Right. So let me uh, let me take a, a couple steps back and just talk about general uh, general structures. Of this. So if we start with our adenosine over here, how do we mm-hmm. go from adenosine to adenosine monophosphate, where we just have a uh, a single uh, phosphate? On our end, and that's going to be through a, a very important uh, chemical synthesis method, and then of course the next step is going to be to create a adenosine diphosphate, uh, which I conveniently placed over there. Cool. And so we see now this one has two, and then of course we have our adenosine triphosphate, triphosphate. Uh, kind of sticking out the other way. But if we yeah, pretended to overlap these a bit and okay so anytime you have a single bond like this it means that this is like freely rotatable so um yeah these structures are going to be in different positions depending on what they're interacting with or where they are but the idea here is that you have uh you know the regular adenosine step one adenosine monophosphate step two adenosine diphosphate step three and then adenosine triphosphate so you know, we could kind of get this this really nice picture over here where we start with our adenosine, go to adenosine monophosphate, diphosphate, and triphosphate. So we could just kind of keep, cool. keep adding these groups. And of course, you know, you could you could build this yourself with the uh, the builder tool if you wanted to turn your um, you know, monophosphate into diphosphate or turn your diphosphate into triphosphate. You could just, right. you know, flip that out, add on your phosphorus, and then, uh, you yeah, know, and then just really make a make an extra oxygen and then phosphorus and boom you know you're off 